good morning students today let us go through a, a new chapter that is origin of metazoa so a question arises in our mind that how these metazoans or in other words the multicellular animals have come to existence on this earth probably you, have, you must have studied about <coughs> the concept of origin of life in your pu classes so you know that long back say about some 4 billion years ago the first cell was formed on this earth and that first cell it gave rise to a kind of organisms what are called as unicellular animals and as we are discussing this chapter under zoology you know that in uh, kingdom animalia the unicellular organisms are nothing but the protozoans so what are metazoans as we already discussed metazoans are nothing but multicellular animals the term itself suggests that meta means many and zoa refers to animals so metazoa includes all types of multicellular animals and in the first chapter we have already discussed that in kingdom animalia the animals have a proper architecture of the body uh, and we must have discussed about this chapter called animal architecture under which i already told you that kingdom animalia is basically divided into two sub kingdoms sub kingdom protozoa and sub kingdom metazoa so sub kingdom protozoa includes only unicellular animals like protozoans whereas sub kingdom metazoa it comprises of all types of multicellular animals it includes sponges cnidates platyhelminthes ascalminthes annelids arthropods mollusks echinoderms and chordates so except phylum protozoa rest of the animals are grouped under metazoa it is believed that the first metazoan originated in the sea about 2000 million years ago from protozoans or protozoan like ancestors there are several theories to explain the origin of metazoans however following are the important among them uh, they are as follows the first theory is syncytial ciliate theory the origin of metazoans probably took place through the growth nuclear division and cellularization of a single protozoan depending upon this idea a very famous biologist my name had z that was in 1953 he proposed that the syncytial ciliate theory his version was later supported by steinbock in 1958 and hansen in 1958 again so it was supported by a group of scientists later hadzi proposed that the first metazoan evolved from a primitive multinucleated protozoan of a ciliate type the multinucleate ciliate represented either paramecium or opalina so more of opalina like organisms these animals are syncytial in nature that is the nuclear division takes place without cytoplasmic division you must have heard about the term syncytial syncytial refers to a kind of situation where uh, different cells sharing the same cytoplasm that means there are no definite cell boundaries they are found to have fused cell membrane so they are syncytial in nature that is the nuclear division takes place without cytoplasmic division and in course of evolution the multinucleated cytoplasm developed a boundary that is cell membranes between the nuclei and in course of time metazoans have developed from these ciliated protozoans so this is a picture which shows the syncytial origin of metazoans and as you observe in the slide uh, sorry the diagram a uh, you observe that 
there is a, a ciliate which is being shown here where it consists of too many cilia that is hair like projections which are locomotive structures on the outer wall and inside the cytoplasm it comprises of many nuclei so multinucleate condition is seen and at the time of reproduction or during the course of evolution uh, each of that nuclear bit it tries to develop a definite cell boundary around itself what is otherwise known as cell membrane or the plasma membrane so it did, it did not happen all of a sudden over a period of time during the course of evolution each nuclear bit it develops a definite cell boundary or cell membrane around itself so that comprise sorry that gives rise to the development of multicellular condition and a bilateral ancestor could give rise to the acl turbellarians which is devoid of gut you know what is acl acl refers to without coelom but had he believed that mid gut tissue of acls is probably sensational in nature and it may be believed that acls would be the ancestral stock from which all other metazoans such as molluscans annelids arthropods echinodermata and chordata have originated except poriferans which could have originated from flagellated protozoans in a separate line Uh, students you must be aware of one important thing here that in case of this uh, metazoan ancestry uh, it uh, actually uh, reflects around these acls I, i already told you what are acls animals having no specific body cavity without a coelom and you know that acelomate condition is found in platyhelminthes and uh, this platyhelminthes will have a gut and that will have uh, this multinucleate condition or syncytial nature of the cytoplasm and they are the actual uh, ancestors for this later metazoans but not for poriferans because poriferans though they are multicellular they do not have tissue or organ grid of organization but still they have cellular grid of organization coming to uh, the other remarks about this theory it may be assumed that flatworms and spiralian protostomes may have derived from opalinids because they belong to multinucleated metazoans but sponges and cnidarians are <coughs> monociliated so could not develop from the multicell uh, multiciliated acelate acel ancestor so spiralian protostomes include molluscans annelids and arthropods and they are called for the spiral cleavage during embryonic development so it is clear that protostomes you know what are protostomes are protostomes are nothing but the animals in which the opening of the blastocil what is called blastopore it give rise to mouth but not anus but in animals which are said to be deuterostomes that blastopore opening give rise to anus this thing i must have already mentioned you in the first chapter itself that is in animal architecture so the strong remark about this theory is that flatworms are the ancestral stocks for these multicellular animals but not for sponges because sponges they are derived from a kind of monociliated protozoans spiralian protostomes includes molluscans annelids and arthropods and they are called for the spiral cleavage during embryonic development colonial flagellate theory the second theory this theory was proposed by a german scientist hackel in 1874 and later supported by lancaster in 1873 or oh sorry 1877 and metchinkoff by 1886 and hyman in 1940 
The morphological data indicate the understanding of the transitional stages of metazoa, suggest a colonial origin of metazoans. The recent popularity of colonial theory was due to the acceptability of Hyman who updated the theory because he is a recent uh, scientist and he explained in, its, in his own way that how these metazoans have originated. According to this theory, the most primitive metazoan was originated from colonial flagellated protozoa. Hackel stated that the colonial ancestor of metazoa was spherical, hollow, volvox like colonial flagellate. Lancaster also proposed that the ancestral colonial protozoa were solid, flagellated, protozoan like animal example pandorina machinkoff has also stated that the ancestral colonial coenoflagellate was solid and resembles the existing proterospongia the outer layer of the colonial proterospongia possesses collared cells which helps in locomotion and the inner layer is filled with amoeboid cells. When the flagella and the collars of the proterospongia are lost, these cells move into the central area like amoeboid cells. So this is a picture which shows the colonial flagellate theory. And as you observe here, uh, that uh, <coughs> multicellular nature or the Metazoan nature is developed from a basal sponge, for example in Volvox, where the daughter colony is developed inside and it develops some uh, yeah, projections what are called as zooids. And in B, that is in Pandorina, it is a <coughs> multinucleate condition where uh, the multinucleate condition later it develops gradually over a period of time the cell boundaries or plasma membrane and each of that will develop a flagellum and then it start behaving like a, a multicellular animal. So that is the situation in case of Pandorina. And in case of coenoflagellate like proterospongia that is in C as you observe here uh, this multicellular nature it gradually develops from the amoeboid cells present inside the cytoplasm and that cytoplasm is nothing but a gelatinous matrix here and on the outer periphery it possesses the projections what are called as collared cells and each of the collared cell develops a flagellum and then each behaves like a multicellular animal so this is a pictorial representation of this theory what is called colonial flightless sorry colonial flagellate theory third one colonial blastia and planula theories it is presumed that the primitive metazoans first originated from spherical hollow colonial flagellate and the evidences in support of this statement are number one sperm cells are flagellated in all metazoans that thing you know and in lower metazoans such as sponges, in many cnidarians, the monociliated cells occur within the body itself. So this is the picture which shows uh, that uh, theory what is called colonial coenoflagellate theory. So on the left hand side as you observe here, it is the hypothetical colonial coenoflagellate. It is hypothetical that is assumption whereas on the right hand side you observe again a hypothetical early metazoan a blastia theory so the right hand side diagram it represents the blasto blastula of higher animals whereas the left diagram it is a theory which suggests that the colonial flagellates especially the coenoflagellates are the ancestors for this metazoans whereas the diagram B that is on the left, right hand side you observe that it is typically a blastula like uh, composition 
having an egg in between and it has outer ectoderm and inner endoderm but there is no cavity as per this theory what is hypothetical theory what is called as metazoans. The cells of the colony bear collar like structure around a single flagellum and possess anterior posterior axis and would swim by placing the anterior pole forward. The cells were differentiated into somatic that is non reproductive and reproductive cells. Hackel proposed that this hypothetical ancestral stage the blastia as a first stage in metazoan origin. Blastia may be compared with existing blastula stage of the multicellular animals and resemble the present day volvox colony. The next evolutionary stage is a solid non evaginated structure of the archenta, uh, sorry, archimetazoan which is called parenchymula larva or plania larva or planula larva. The planula ancestor is represented as a small ovoid pelagic animal with radial symmetry containing solid mass of cells and the internal cell mass is to be considered as the migratory cells of the blastula stage. The planula stage gave rise to cnidarians and tenophores by separate lines and it is also presumed that in course of evolution the benthic bilateral primitive flatworms that is turbellarians a kind of acils have evolved from the sexual planulae. Coming to fourth one gastria theory. This theory was proposed in somewhat modified form by Metchinkoff. He proposed a solid double walled couplex structure called the gastria which is formed by the invagination of the blastia at the posterior pole. It is something like uh, as a blastula gave rise to or gets modified into gastrula in case of the early development stages of higher animals. The gastria represents the gastrula stage of development in the existing multicellular organisms and proposed as a metazoan ancestor. The outer layer of the gastria is called ectoderm and an inner layer called endoderm and the space which is enclosed by the endoderm is called primitive gut and the gut communicates to the exterior by the mouth that is protostom. Later on colonial theories have been made up to date by hand in 1963, Ivanov in 1968 and Reisinger in 1970 etc. Greenberg in 1959 has pointed out that the planula larva is seen not only in many cnidarians but also in a few sponges too and at least in a single tenophore. So this is a diagram showing gastria theory. So under A diagram A it is the hypothetical ancestral blastia stage which almost resembles the blastula of higher animals hence called blastia stage and as you observe here there will be a germ cells in the inner cavity <coughs> sorry and on the outer side there will be an ectoderm having the cells proje uh, bearing projections called flagella and uh, there are some gamete like cells which are there on the posterior pole. So it almost resembles the blastula of higher animals hence called blastia stage. So it is a hypothetical blastia stage. And in B it is the diagram showing hypothetical ancestral gastria that is gastrula stage of higher animals. And as you observe there it is almost resembling like a gastrula of higher animals having outer ectoderm, inner endoderm and a cavity what is called as primitive gut here and the other such projections can also be seen on the outer ectoderm that is each of the cell bears a projection called flagellum. So this is what about section B or what is called as diagram B. So
so i think with this we can conclude at this level let us continue our discussion in the next class thank you